Well, Prime Minister, we saw the Iron Lady from a distance. We called her the Iron Lady because of the Falklands, the Soviet Union, the fight with the labor unions, and the list goes on. But you saw the Iron Lady up close. Does the label fit the person? Yes, uh, it did very much. Um, she, it, it's incomplete, but uh, uh, to the extent that, it apl that uh, something applied to these very important policies and attitudes, uh, Peter, that you've just enumerated, she was indeed an Iron Lady. What did you see up close? Oh, I saw uh, a woman who um, was leader of a great country who had inherited the sick man of Europe, namely the United Kingdom, and who transformed it into a vibrant uh, winner on the international stage of great power and accomplishment, um, uh, and um, who, who then turned around and played a role based on that success domestically, internationally, where she provided, along with President Reagan and Chancellor Kohl and François Mitterrand and others, tremendous leadership in the fight against the Soviet Union and the obliteration of the Warsaw Pact and, uh, and the Soviet Union itself. She was a um, world-class leader. Uh, now, what you didn't see, uh, to come back to your first point, was uh, her, Margaret Thatcher in private. She was kind and thoughtful, considerate, uh, and um, very concerned uh, about her interlocutor and, uh, quite frankly, never carried a grudge. She could go on after a pretty strong fight, and I had a few with her, uh, and go on to something else with, and was never mentioned again. She was a remarkable and exceptional woman, and one of the great leaders uh, that I had the privilege of knowing. Well, you know, one of those fights that you had, I guess the major fight that you and Margaret Thatcher had, I mean, we know that you and President Reagan and Prime Minister Thatcher were a powerful trio on the Conservative front, but you were on opposite sides on sanctions against South Africa to fight apartheid. What was it like to be an opponent of Margaret Thatcher? I was not only on this issue, Peter, the opponent of Margaret Thatcher, I was the opponent of Ronald Reagan. I disagreed completely with the positions that they adopted and articulated as being appropriate for South Africa. We knew from Nelson Mandela in jail with messages given by uh, Mbeki and uh, Oliver Tambo and so on that he was in favor of the policies of the strong policies uh, that Canada was advocating on behalf of the Commonwealth uh, to rid the world of the, apart the apartheid regime and to free Mandela from prison. We knew he was in favor of it. Mrs. Thatcher was against sanctions uh, and, and opposed much of what we suggested and tried to do and opposed us very strongly. And she was as tough as nails when it came to articulating her position. It, the, 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 the biggest one, I think, took place here in Mirabel. When I met with her for 90 minutes one day, uh, I was chairman of the Commonwealth and we were, I think, preparing for the 1988 summit. And uh, we met at Mirabel and she um, explained her position again in vigorous terms and, uh, and at one point she, as you know, she uh, kind of launched an attack on me, uh, not a bitter one, but a strong attack on me and on Canada. And I had to say to her, Margaret, I am not a member of your government. I am the head of a sovereign government called Canada and we articulate the policies in Canada's interest, nobody else's. And I said, besides that, my opinion is that you are placing your country on this issue on the wrong side of history. And uh, she uh, could give as, as good as she took, and uh, she responded with a, another attack, but a milder one. And then when it was over, we shook hands and uh, said goodbye, and she never mentioned it again, although she didn't lose any of her force or vigor when she argued the case in subsequent years. You know, it's been fascinating today to, to, to listen to people of all political stripes calling her a great leader. But we also know she was a polarizing figure, made enemies even within her own party. How can you be both? How can you be a great leader and be polarizing at the same time? How do you reconcile those two? Well, you know, I once read a philosopher, uh, Peter, who wrote that if a leader leaves office on a wave of popularity, it probably means uh, that he didn't accomplish very much, that he failed to confront the real problems in his society. And when you do that, there's a natural resistance to change. 
Uh, and so people get offended and upset with you when you try and bring about dramatic change in your country or in the world. And Margaret was a, was a person of enormous change. Leadership skills, brilliant, tough, disciplined, focused. And look at the result. She transformed uh, her country in every which way, and she helped transform the world. So of course there were a lot of people, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, China broken along the way. And uh, she took some delight in doing that, uh, but the, the end result, I think, uh, classifies her, ranks her with the greatest leaders of modern history. Last question. What's your own personal favorite story about Margaret Thatcher? Well, Peter, it probably came after we both left office. We used to see, Mila and I would see Margaret and Dennis and Nancy Reagan sometimes uh, down in Southampton at Carol Petrie's home for long weekends. And I remember a, a weekend uh, together when after dinner and uh, with a little wine flowing and what have you, uh, someone sat down, I think it was Peter Duchin, sat down in Carol's living room and started to play the White Cliffs of Dover. And Margaret Thatcher got up, and she has that con a contralto voice, and she started to sing that greatest of all wartime songs that the Brits and the Allies sang uh, to defend against the, the Nazis, the White Cliffs of Dover. And as I watched her, I knew that I was seeing a unique little moment in history, and I was seeing a great woman uh, in action because that, too, was part of her of her personality, not only the tough Margaret Thatcher, but the warm-hearted Margaret Thatcher who loved her country and her people in a very special way. Prime Minister, we'll leave it at that for tonight. Thanks for remembering. And thank, thank you, Peter.